Thank you. And uh, let me start by showing you this slide. Look at the figure on the screen. What do you think this is? Any guess? Well, tell you immediately that this is the amount of data that was produced daily in the world in 2012. And this is according to the IBM. Now, if you wanted to visualize this uh, figure, if you wanted to understand how much data this is equal to, think of 20 million filing cabinet, each of them storing the equivalent of one petabyte of text. Now, you may think that this is an amazing figure. You may think that this is staggering. But you know what I find really staggering is the fact that this figure refers to 2012. You know what is the predicted size of the digital universe in 2020? 44 trillion gigabytes. And trust me, this is a lot of data. Or, as people would say these days, these are truly big data. Now, you know, when we talk about big data, people like to talk about storage. They like to talk about processing power. And don't take me wrong, I think these are two important issues because we need to know where this data will be stored. We need to know that we can process this data in a very efficient way. But I think that uh, there are two important issues around the big data that we need to focus on. Two issues that are closely related. And I will start from the first issue, from data production. Who is producing all this data? Now, you may think, OK, this is a classical rhetorical questions, question. We all know that these data are produced by you, by me, by everybody in this theater. So we are the data producers, and we know that as we get uh, along with our lives, we leave behind a trail of data, data that we think may be forgotten, but somehow they are stored and analyzed. Now, if we think that leaving behind the digital footprint is a necessary part of uh, the modern life, I think that as a data producer, we should expect and demand that these data are used for the common good. They are used to improve the living standards, uh, used to improve the society we live in. And this leads me to the second question. Can big data be used for the common good? Can be used to shape the society for the better? Now, I think this leads me to the second, to another important issue around the big data. I'm sure that you have all heard about the need of unnursing big data, the need of unlocking the knowledge which is stored in the big data. But deep inside, we all think that the only companies that can do this are the, la the big digital companies based in the Silicon Valley, the Amazon and Google of this world. Well, it is true. They are good at analyzing their data. They are good at extracting information and value from the data about their customers. And they, use the, and they use this information to increase revenues and increase profitability. But I wanted to make a point here that the data are not only here for, uh, to, incre to increase profitability of digital companies. Data can be used to improve the society around us. And I wanted to give you two examples of two organizations that are far away from the Silicon Valley. Now, the first one is Cambridge, uh, the Citizen Advice Bureau, CAB. As I told you, we are no longer in the Silicon Valley. So the Citizen Advice Bureau is an organization we are all familiar with. They basically look after citizens, 
that have difficulties, most of the time these difficulties are of financial nature. And uh, they are not a digital company. So Cab is not a digital company. It's just a data store. It has a lot of information about their clients, a lot of information about the problems that they face. At, uh, and what is interesting is that uh, one day, someone from the cab started to look into this data, started to look into the patterns behind this data, into the correlations among the data that they stored. And what they discovered? They discovered that the financial problems of their uh, clients, as they call them, were closely related to the practices of the payday loans companies. Now, I like to think that it was a volunteer that simply found that the payday loans companies were at the heart of the, most of the financial problems that the that citizens that went to the cab had, to, had encountered. But what I like to highlight here is that they didn't only noted the problem, but they started to campaign to change legislation around these companies, around this industry. And they worked with the Financial Conduct Authority to change and introduce more stringent regulation of this industry. Now, what is the result? We all know that these companies are now strictly regulated following the introduction of legislation at the beginning of 2015. Now, if you think about it, this is not analytics per se. This is not predictive analytics. There is nothing fancy. I'm not even sure that this story qualifies as a big data story. Uh, what I like to think, what I like you to note is that there was somebody that realized there was a pattern in the data and wanted to know more about what is behind this pattern. And there is, more importantly, an organization that decided that his role was not only that of storing data, but they realized that they could use data to improve the society they, and the communities they operate in. Now, I think that this is the really, truly amazing bit of this story. I promised you a second story. I'm going to talk of another group of organizations that are, again, not in the Silicon Valley. I'm talking about councils. I'm going to talk about local governments. We don't think of local governments as being at the forefront of the digital revolution. We think of local governments and we think of civil servants. We think of red tape. We think of forms to fill. But in reality, local governments matter. They matter because they provide the services that are important to the community. They are the ones that manage the provision of services for children protection, services around adult social care. They are in charge of protecting vulnerable people. And in their own silent way, also local government are starting to look at what the data they have can do for them. How can they use them to improve the quality of life of the people they are in charge of? And I wanted to talk about a small project which was led, uh, which, which was really rolled out in Camden Town, one of the London boroughs. And what they did, they simply created an integrated digital record that allowed to gather information around healthcare and social care and allowed a set of organizations, including the NHS, to have access to detailed information around a specific individual and around his needs. Now, you may think that, again, there is nothing fancy about this. This is not around analytics. This is not predictive analytics. What Camden Town has been allowed to do is simply to put together information that was stored in different parts of the public sector. Okay, nothing fancy about this. But the impact has been profound. Why? 
because the, com the healthcare commissioning process has become slicker and there have been major improvements in terms of efficiency and effectiveness of the commissioning process. So, Camden Town is now a pioneer in this area. But this is not the only story. Across the country, there are plenty of councils that are going down this route. And I wanted to remind you that there are plenty of integrated health and social care pioneers. One of these is Southern Borough Council. And they are doing exactly this. They are trying to put together information and data that, is tra that are traditionally siloed in different parts of the public sector in such a way that the quality of life of their citizen improves. Now, I think that at this point, we wanted to think about the possibilities in front of us. Now, let's think about a world where spending cuts to local governments are not rolled out across the board, but are calibrated to the needs of vulnerable people in such that the quality of life of these individuals is preserved. Now, let's think of a world where resources are allocated on the basis of transparent rules and are allocated on the basis of the needs of individuals. Let's think of a world where resources are spent on prevention rather than managing the consequences of the emergence of problems. Now, you may think that this is really something that may not be relevant now, but it is not true because this is a silent revol revolution that is happening now across the UK. And it's a revolution that has been enabled by the fact that we have a set of tools, analytics, that allows us to understand what are the needs of individuals, what is the risk of developing some pathologies, and allows us to identify a set of transparent rules that allow to allocate resources in a much more efficient way. Now, analytics, is really the first step. Because what we really need is a group of data custodians, the local governments, the charities that store the data, that are willing to embrace more this data revolution, and that are really happy, that are willing to share the data with researchers to improve the quality of life. Now, I think that as data, producers and data owners, we are entitled to expect exactly this. We should expect them to share data with us and we should expect them to use data to improve the quality of life of their citizen. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>